Oh, hello. Um, just fixing some uh, hardware I issues. Uh, welcome. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer. Thank you for jo joining me for these update videos where I tell you all of the features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users that I manage to do. Usually these videos are for just the week, but it's been a while, more than a month in fact, since I gave you all an update on the kinds of work that I've been up to. Um, first of all, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Uh, thank you all so much for your help. Um, especially to the encouraging words from the pre from previous vi video. Um, it's always heartening to know that you guys have my back. And uh, also it helps with things like this. Um, unforeseen circumstances. Um, okay, so what have we got this week? We're going to be talking about colour. And um, what, I, what I managed to do was uh, investigate some of the issues surrounding Inkscape CMYK support. You'll remember in the pre previous video I said... Inkscape has supported CMYK for a long time, but it supported CMYK in SVG. Yeah, th this isn't entirely true. I mean, it's it's true on the uh, the theoretical level, but I found out that actually Inkscape CMYK support, basically ICC color pro profile support for, for co colors, is entirely uh, for solid colors only. Uh, gradients were not included. Uh, not because they're not included in the specification or because Inkscape didn't intend for them to be included, but because our code excluded them accidentally. So as I was investigating some uh, fixes for swatches and color palettes, I found this big hole and I was just like, I, I got to address this. I got to make Inkscape's SVG CMYK support whole again, uh, or, or at least you know, fix a lot of the issues. And oh boy, as I ran through this code, did I find a lot of just some bit rot code that hadn't been tested, clearly fun functionality that had been intended to, to be used, but like never really exercised very much. Uh, and I'm not surprised that nobody wants to use it if it worked the way that I found, found it. Okay, so the first thing is um, I improved the color picker visibility. This is so that you can select which of the uh, you know HSV, RGB, CMYK color pickers are visible. Um, this is just to basically mean that you don't have to restart Inkscape in, in order to fix those things. Um, and then I basically wanted to work on the swatches and the color palette. Firstly, to add a the ability to pin and unpin any color or any swatch from both the bottom bar uh, color. This is so that there's there's a set of colors that will scroll, and then there's a set of colors that would be pinned, so you will always see see them. By default, pinned colors will be uh, non, uh, black, white, and I think gray, maybe gray, um, and and you will be able to select any colors to pin, so that you can kind of just keep keep them there. But also, the same widget is kind of used in the swatches di di dialog. So uh, you can also pin colors in there, including your custom colors, which are saved now inside the document. Um, the pinned colors for palettes that are installed are saved in your preferences. It's just two different places. So you know that if you open them on a different computer, this is what's, what's going on. Um, this, of course, <laughs> uh, led me to understand that CMYK was not act being saved inside of these sw swatches because swatches and Inkscape are just gradients. They're just one-stop great gradients. That's how that's how we store them because SVG does not support swatches. Um, but but if gradients don't support support CMYK, then swatches don't support CMYK. And what good is a swatch if it only supports sRGB? Uh, so fixing that, fixing the deep problems we had with that, um, fixing them for both gradients and for swats, swatches. And then I found there was a whole bunch of pro problems in the CMS switcher. Uh, it just signals that weren't, weren't being saved, things that weren't being set. Um, I've got actual notes here, a big long list of things. Um, you know, strokes becoming transparent, uh, fill becoming opaque, so it would just discard the opacity. And oh boy, was that an annoying thing thing to try and fix. Uh, the color notebook wouldn't select the CMS tab, even though the thing you were you had selected had CMS support. Um, and, and also just remembering what, what it was doing at any time. It was just kind of... Mm. 
So all of those pro pro problems have been fixed. I've basically been w working through them as I found them. Um, the functionality is still going to be need needed to be tested. I would consider this to be alpha quality at best since the um, I'm not a designer myself, so I don't know where to exercise it. And if you are in, interested in test testing, I'm going to leave a link to the uh, the builds, the developer builds, and you can tell me if it's any good. Um, but that's what I've been up to. Let's have a look at some of the other fe features and fi fixes from other Inkscape developers. Um, this is also going to be a bit of a long list, but what I've done is I've, I've condensed it down a bit uh, for, for, for brevity. Um, oh, the first thing is I am giving a talk at uh, the Creative Freedom Sum Summit, uh, 11.30 Eastern Time. Um, it's, a, it's an online video conference, and I'll be talking about the multi-page support in Inkscape. So I'll be walking through multi-page and you know showing maybe some of the 1.3 the 1 fe features for it as well. Um, so... Habir has been working on speeding up uh, extensions, improving the look and feel of various things, and fixing some LP problems. PBS actually landed his uh, a, a part four of his threading support, which increases the speed and safety of Inkscape. It's doing lots of fixes, which basically improve the backend support in, in Inkscape. Um, CG Evans created an option to allow you to select zero opacity objects. Uh, which is by default turned to true. Um, I'm so sorry, uh, CG, for how long it took us to uh, review your merge request and get it merged in. He actually created this last year, and it was just sitting at the back of the pile. I've been trying to get to some so some of the older merge requests so we don't lose some of the valuable work from contributors who are not kind of online every day, um, and so they don't have the presence to push their merge requests, um, and they're just waiting there, waiting for somebody to, to look at them. Um, but that's that's a feature that I know that a lot of people have been asking for. Uh, Luz Paz fix some typographical errors. Very simple fix. Anybody could do that. Uh, Raphael, he's been improving error hand handling, lib2 geom support, uh, and crashes. Uh, Mike added some stock, some more stock patterns, and he also re removed a bunch of cruft, which is great. Uh, Jonathan fixed the guides around page extension. Um, and he fi fixed the PDF order in, in the export because it was too too low down. And he has actually been doing uh, the hiring lead for uh, getting somebody to work on Inkscape paid to to do the um, uh, import, you know, like import um, support. And he, I, I've, I just want to point out just how much work it is to do non-coding administrative work like this. Uh, full full respect to Jonathan for, for really going in and doing this in such a really, really cool way. Uh, Eric Lou fixed an empty file, file name in, in the batch export pro problem, and Christian Rolfs fixed a crash in the gradient mark markers. Um, there are a couple of other things, but, you know, my, more my, minor, and I tried to condense it. So, uh, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you for jo joining me, and I hope I will see you next week. Um, one thing I will say as we as we lead out, um, my mum watched my last video, and you know the thing she said. She didn't comment on anything else. She said, "Why was your desk so dir dir dirty?" Uh, and I'm like, "Oh, mum." <laughs> well, now it's even worse. Now it's filled with electronics. So um, yeah, thanks, mum. See ya.